What's up, everybody? It's Isaac on the intro to the intro, which means one thing, one big thing. We got a special episode today. We got a special episode, and uh, it's going to be legendary. I'm telling you right now. It's basically we had previous guest Donut, you know, Donut, and then Juan Ayala from the One on One podcast. And if you don't know who he is, because he hasn't been on the show yet, but I'm going to get him on here. This guy dives so deep into the ancient mystery schools and the occult wisdom and alchemy. I mean, the dude's reading straight up magic book grimoires, trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, it's impressive because I've tried reading this stuff and most of it is very difficult to get through. But Homeboy goes through it. Uh, he does a lot of collaborations with Paranoid American, which, you know, he's been on the show several times. Uh, all friends of the show, right? And we get together. For a little menage tray of conspiracy, if you're ready for it. I don't know if you're ready for it. Because we blast through a bunch of topics. We go from Mandela Effect to Robert Anton Wilson to characters like Tim Leary, Huxley, Crowley. Uh, Juan breaks down a thing called the Chapel Perilous, which is fascinating. It's the nature of reality, right? And John C. Lilly bagging them dolphins. And we talk about, we end up talking about the major plans, right? The big picture. What is the Illuminati doing to us? And why are they doing it? And what's their plan? What is their goal? And, we, and to do this, we talk about the origins of angels versus angles, how that fits into mathematics, Pythagoras, Freemasons, hyper reality. We talk a little bit about crypto, crypto legend BitBoy and some Illuminate confirmed <laughs> allegations he's been talking about. Uh, the effort of cloister and the big picture. What do we do about any of this nonsense? What are we talking about? And you got to listen to the whole thing. It's very fascinating. Uh, these these two guys blow my mind. When I whenever I talk to these guys, uh, the magic is in the room. The magic is in the room. So strap in. We're going hard in the paint. We're not slowing down for any normies. So you better get ready. You better strap your helmet on your tinfoil helmet. Because we're dropping a banger. So without further ado, oh, and also before I forget, I've got the links to their stuff in the show notes. If you like my content, you're going to love their content. Donuts everywhere. He's on Instagram, spelled D-O-E-N-U-T. He's got a couple YouTube channels. He's got a website. And then the one-on-one -on -one podcast, which I also I subscribe to both of these guys, right? Juan Ayala, the one-on-one -on -one podcast. You, If you like to talk, when I start getting into alchemy and some of this occult Minutia, you're going to absolutely love one on one. His podcast is a banger of occult symbolism. Uh, check him out. I got li his links in the show notes. It's called the One on One Podcast. You can find it everywhere. But I've got links in the show notes for both of these guys' stuff. Go check them out. Yo, what up? It's Donut, and you tuning in to All Your Illuminata News. We got a special, special podcast today. We got Isaac Weishop, the Illuminati Watcher up in here and the one-on-one -on -one podcast the homunculus how's it going everybody <laughs> what's up man <laughs> i knew i knew you were gonna crush that intro man i knew it i had it <laughs> well i've been so excited isaac and i haven't forgot about you i got you some maui island this is that rare rare stuff i haven't forgotten to send it to you i gotta send it to you that's right. great lahaina this place doesn't exist anymore oh snap and i I got that for you, and I forgot to send it over. So I'm gonna yeah, I, I, I didn't forget, but I didn't want to bug you about it. I don't, I don't beg for gifts because I was like, eh, maybe he forgot. It's fine. No, you I have, did not. You have forget. a PO box, Isaac. I do. Yeah, I do. I gotta send you. I gotta send you the homunc manual, bro. The homunculus owner's manual. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Is that uh, did you work on that with uh, Thomas? Yeah, with paranoid American. Yeah, there you go. Shout out to him. It's the history. Oh, that's a cool one, man. I got a whole homunculus. One. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Paranoid American. Shout out to him. So, Isaac, I am so happy that you're here and you're in a different time zone. We're all in different time zones. Now, I remember there being three time zones and I guess there's four. Is this a Mandela effect or has there always been four time zones? I feel like there's always been four. Oh, dang it. And, no, and there's, there's, it was three, bro, because me and Donut got on, on an hour early, and I'm like, yo, this dude's going to flake on us, Donut. Like, we don't even know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, both, both of you are on wait for me? Yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, Donut's got my celly. He could have hit me up. No, I, you know what? I, I could debunk this because 
1999, I joined the military and I drove all over this damn country a few times. And um, yeah, I, I know for sure the time code, at least since 99, because that was, you know, because I'd have to call back home back east and figure out what time. And, and what was annoying to me was growing up back east, uh, they cater the television programming times to the east coast like they'll just tell you the eastern standard time and then everybody else just has to figure it out i guess so when i moved out here i got all confused i said man i don't know what time anything is on tv man so anyways in conclusion oh well, thank you for, thank you for your service and you know i'm i'm a big fan of yours isaac and juan and you cover pop culture um and that's what you know fascinates me i'm I'm very much i feel like your research i like jumped on as well and just the way that society is controlled through the social engineering of fifth generation warfare of the media of celebrities and you've been covering this for such a long time uh under illuminati watcher so i'm I'm just so grateful to be in your presence and i'll I'll make sure everybody go over and subscribe to isaac's channel his youtube his patreon i got the all the links down below and also the one-on-one podcast but with uh with the whole celebrity thing what is your your thoughts right now what are you looking into i know that bad bunny let me see where the bad bunny image is. I got bad bunny. He was doing some weird stuff. He always doing some weird stuff. Um, what celebrities are you looking into right now? Well, right. Well, and then we'll talk about that first and foremost. Uh, thank you guys for letting me link up with you. Cause, uh, uh, Juan, I've been, I've listened to a few of your episodes cause you go super deep, man. And you've got great research on some of these very difficult books to read about alchemy and the homunculus and things like that so uh you know i know you do great research so of course my audience should always of course subscribe to my guests as they should with you and then donut also you know i i uh actually i was i was on your patreon until about a week ago i had to turn off my patreon because i got about six months where i'm trying to dave ramsey my bills up and then i'm going to hit back on but you're always public you're the king of pushing intriguing headlines about things that i didn't think i cared about and then i find myself being like what the hell is he talking about and like oh okay yeah the 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 dolphins are in the illuminati i guess it turns out you know and the worms too bro but yeah worms. likewise dude but i'm gonna tell you right now i'm as confused as you are when it comes to any of these topics so okay good Good (laughs) i'm just on the same journey bro like i'm trying to figure it all out at the same time while trying to present it in a semi-coherent digestible way and i think that's why people kind of gravitate towards it because it's like it's complicated topics that i'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around so i'm presenting in a way where i can kind of grasp my mind around it right so but yeah i appreciate you bro and I've, I've, I've listened to your stuff too and you're one of the ogs so yeah thank you man awesome yeah. to be here well yeah, here's that, yeah Robert Robert anton wilson was the you know he was the the guy who popularized the the illuminati conspiracy kind of uh, the whole idea of it right yeah so. and uh super fascinating because like the i feel like this year of 2023 because he was all about the 23 enigma uh a lot of the stuff is coming out and playing throughout these rituals with three six mafia the memphis right and i he always talked about uh timothy leary um and john c Lilly and timothy leary right here and John C. Lilly together, Timothy Leary called John Lilly the new Aleister Crowley, pretty much, mm. um, in the introduction to his book, saying that how important his research was. And his research really for the dolphins was to communicate with aliens underneath the ocean. But uh, what the elites really liked was his meta programming, um, which I feel like goes into the whole transhumanism technocratic mm-hmm. society was mm-hmm. the with the Bert, and, bertrand russell uh being like the, the godfather of it all and his name bertrand is like russell brand bertrand russell there's all these mm-hmm. weird names with uh aldous snow right well, aldous they might line up numerically right to like this simulation thing right like the kabbalah with a q that that Crowley was always talking about and how they aligned certain words like abracadabra, he changed it to abrahadabra to equal 418, 
which is a sacred number to the Thelema. And I think it's interesting you bring up Crowley because, right, to dive deep and, and r- jump off the deep end right off that at the beginning, uh, you, uh, the the Illuminatus guy, what's his name again? I'm drawing a blank. You had the book up just now, Donut. Robert, Robert Anton, Anton Wilson. Wilson. Robert Anton Wilson. There's a, because I'm all about like interdimensionalism, right uh, projecting your consciousness to other states and other places if you will right like this whole idea of stargate to whatnot and he has the concept of the chapel perilous right and i know that crowley and parsons and all these guys were all about trying to either project humanity right the consciousness of humanity or whatever it was into like this these new eons or aeons right like these new places right these new parts in in time and space, whatever it is, right? And the Chapel Perilous, right? Because right now it, the Chapel Perilous is a place where you go, where you really can't trust your senses, right? And we see that as we go, especially being in the conspiracy community, people can't trust their senses now, especially nowadays with all these deep fakes and all these things that we can't, right? Cogito or go some, I think therefore I am because the senses can be tricked. Right. And it's it's weird because Descartes also talked about how there might have been a demon controlling his perception. Right. And, and and again, it's very Gnostic in nature. But this idea of a demiurge controlling your reality. Well, the Chapel Perilous is a place where you go, where you don't you're paranoid. You don't know if your reality is being controlled by supernatural means. Right. But it's the scary part about the Chapel Perilous is that when you're in it, you don't know that you're in it. And when you try to get out, you either lose your mind, which happens to a lot of these occultists, right? The goetic magicians where they where they lose their their sanity or their reality is, is warped. And it's like, what if these people, these occultists, right? Timothy Leary, uh, you know, being referred to as this sort of uh, neo Aleister Crowley and his whole ideas of psychedelics, right? Warping people's perceptions. What if they try to project us into right bit boy crypto speaking nonsense and and going crazy on social media what if they've already projected right uh, reality or or society into this chapel perilous and we're just trying to fight our way out almost like the whole cern thing in 2012 the timeline shifted when they were messing around with whatever it was that they were messing around because i think that they're messing around with forces that th- it's magic i mean it's forces mm-hmm. beyond comprehension unintelligible concepts and they try to put a, a name and a face to them where I don't think you're able to really, that's why they go insane. Cause they're trying to right name the unnameable, right? The abyss, like this, this concept. And I don't know, it just, you, you brought that up and it made me think of that, the chapel perilous, which is one of my favorite concepts that there is like these alternate dimensions, if you will. Yeah, and, and let me, uh, this is my, my brief off the dome timeline of what I think is happening. And we'll, and we'll tie it into sort of pop culture, celebrity, illuminati symbolism type stuff if you go back to john d and edward kelly and and everyone who listens to me heard me talk about these things a million times but it's fine <laughs> the, the john d and edward kelly you know they're they're they they assemble the enochian language which was the aliens right telling them hey here's how you make contact with us and they were called the uh the angels back then but you know you could argue angels and demons are just aliens interdimensional and they say, hey, here's how you contact us. Here's a language to use. And Aleister Crowley, allegedly Joseph Smith was using the Enochian language too when he contacted Moroni, which is why uh, Damien Eccles was out here in Salt Lake City and he was um, very intrigued by the uh, the LDS religion. And I think he's now a member, but he's a member of like multiple religions. It, and he's a confusing guy. But uh, he was very intrigued by Joseph Smith's ability to channel and make contact with these entities or however you want to call it so that happens alistair crowley of course the the sort of uh the guy who made a lot of things happen uses that enochian language in the omelantra working to contact lamb which everyone knows as the first gray alien but where and that's where things get really intriguing right? we're talking about you know we're in the 1920s ish right and aldous huxley comes along and writes doors of perception about the use of hallucinogens which allegedly crowley i think it was crowley that introduced aldous huxley to mescaline and and the idea of psychedelics and this was all during the beatnik uh we're talking about 40s 50s time frame now and the beatniks influenced the hippies and the hippies of course were the one that popularized all the psychedelics including tim leary who was himself uh, um influenced by 
the doors of perception to contact or make contact to higher dimensional beings or achieve a higher consciousness idea. And these are all very weird concepts, especially to the sort of, uh, you know, Christian West, whatever, who don't talk like this. So when they talk about like expanding your consciousness, I think it's a simplified version of saying we found a way to, and, and this is where it gets into, you know, weird belief systems and Gnosticism is kind of the recurring religion that you, we hear about all the time. And, and it's this ultimate belief that, hey, this world we live in is just a big deception. We need to ascend consciousness and ascend out of this dimension and go to a higher plane of existence where the real God is, not this false demiurge God or uh, Yaldabaoth God. And so the the beatniks, which, by the way, you know, side tangent, Charles Manson, who I've studied a lot, he always said he was a beatnik. He said, I was never a hippie. I was always a beatnik because the beatniks, they knew the real deal. That's why Jack Parsons and Marjorie Cameron were in that scene, you know. And then, of course, in other sidebars, Jack Parsons, we all know, did the uh, the Babylon working ritual and, and made his own contact with entities. but. John C. Lilly, I don't know. I remember the years he was doing his studies, but he was around the same time as, you know, your Learys and your and your Lilies and all this. Uh, John C. Lilly wrote a book called The Mind as a Biocomputer or something like that. And I actually I, I read that book. I've got notes on it. I, I, I've been meaning to do a show on it for about five years now. And the it was funny. I actually printed out. I actually printed out the whole book on, on, I found a PDF online of it. I printed the whole thing out. And what I would do is I would take it into, don't tell my employer, but I would take it into meetings that were boring to me that I didn't need to be there. And I (laughs) I would put it in my little notebook, act like I was taking notes and like, I just kind of read, you know, anyway. Was it Uh, this book right here? Yeah, that's it. The human biocomputer. That's it. Yeah. This is Timothy Leary introducing it, I believe. um, And how important it is to the cybernetic age right here. I believe this is a Timothy Leary intro. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they want. This is, and this is all based upon their fantasy of the technocracy, meaning science is the new God in the technocracy. That's the new doctrine that we all have to follow. And these people, you know, whatever people's religious beliefs are, I honestly don't care. The, these people that push for the technocracy, which, you know, Elon Musk's father or grandfather was arrested for technocracy, pushing technocracy because it was a subversive movement in Canada in like the 1800s or something. Um, but these technocrats, they think science is the answer to everything and we need to get rid of all spirituality unless it's man-made science. And they want to push us into the digital matrix because that is, of course, their idea of ascending consciousness and creating a way of escaping this reality and finding a more perfect reality, which we all know is ultimately going to lead to, uh, you know, more surveillance. It's like Facebook, right? If you could live in Facebook, that sounds like a damn nightmare, but that's what they want, right? <laughs> they want, right. they want surveillance. They want the ability to censor. They want the ability to control us, which is everything you've seen from every movie, every book, 1984, brave new world, all that stuff. Right. And who wrote, you know, these were insiders, Audis Huxley, Audis Huxley's got the Illuminati eye. And the interesting thing is this whole alien stuff that's coming out is coming out of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And Julian Huxley, Aldous Huxley's brother, created UNESCO. I learned that from you, Dona. I had to look that. I fact checked it because I was like, no way, really? And I looked at it. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Well, you, you're homeboys with uh, Jay and I watch him a lot. So, oh, OK, uh, OK. Yeah. I'm in like good company learning, uh, from all y'all, uh, you know, cause I, I, I don't know, man, it, it is crazy. And I like that you bring up the Gnostic element to it. Cause this is all new stuff for me. And I've been researching something called the sacred vows of IAO. And it comes from the book of EO right here, where God is this four letter word EU, just like, uh, Adenoi, the Tetragrammaton, you put it all together, it creates a body and vows hold the world together. And even if you look up Tetragrammaton right here on Wikipedia, it will show this IAO, which is Iota, Alpha, Omega. And this IAO is like in all of the language. And it comes from this Gnostic element 
But this is what I find interesting is that the tic tac toe right here. Um, where is that? I gotta show this. Just the way our English language is created follows this pattern of I A O. So you got tic tac toe. So it's I A O. Uh, tic tock, King Kong, all of our language. This is the um the cornerstone to the english language and english there's all the spells like spell casting probably the best language though and here's the abraxas with the iaw which is very similar with the gnostic stuff and even spying on everybody right you're talking about the scientific watching everybody mm -hmm. uh this information awareness office is the iao Whoa. which was uh yeah created by poindexter but i, I don't know this is and and don't forget me. too donut that literally the word grammar comes from grimoire and a grimoire is a book of spells quite literally and i mean that's that's etymology that's not a conspiracy that's what it actually goes down to and this idea of being able so the sacred vowels and i and i I was researching that probably four years ago when I first started diving into like research and really questioning what it was. It all started with religion for me. And I started to study the Gnostics and what they were all about. And there was these books that they were finding that were about vocalizations. And we know that that's also important in Enochian because they, they essentially, they don't know what the Gnostics were using these letters for in these books. But essentially, they were used for ceremonial and magical practices, so they say. And the whole thing about the Enochian language is right to be able to open up a bridge from that other side over into our side. And these angels or angles, right? That because one of the interesting aspects of any any Enochian magician, when you ask them if they've come into contact with these entities, is that and and John D. and Kelly actually write about this where they were almost like geometric figures, almost like, again, like this DMT type entity on the other side. And it may, it would make a lot of sense of angels, angles, right? You have this whole idea and the, and the idea of like Pythagorean palaces, because uh, I saw you brought up something that said eugenics on there and eugenics was actually an idea that Pythagoras came up with. And we know that Pythagoras is revered by the, the Freemasons and the secret societies. And I think there's something to that aligning not only these buildings with these Pythagorean palaces to either elevate consciousness within that building or lower it the same way you can do it. Maybe that's why they want to put us in these 15 minute cities because an aspect to the Pythagorean palaces, right? In a sympathetic magical way, if you have the model of that building or that city or whatever it is, you're able, you're able to tap into telepathically to the energy in the model, in the simulacra, in the real, in the real place. Right. So if you have the model of this building, they're able to train people. And I mean, we see this on Stranger Things, right? When they tell her, find the find this guy. And she's able to go right almost through the abyss and find the guy that they're giving her the picture of or whatever it is. Well, that's remote viewing. That's an actual concept that the that it, it's an occult concept where you're able to tap into the energy of a building using the model of it. So imagine why they want to stuff us into these 15 minute cities. It's not about being more efficient or like there's an occult aspect to it because they use these angles in these buildings to also suppress your consciousness. Right. So I think it goes way deeper than what people are, are willing to admit. And every time I look into like the origins of the occult, like look at Charles Babbage, the, the father of the modern day computer, or even you have Seymour Cray, I think is his name or Seymour Clay, where he was the father of the supercomputer talking to elves underneath his house in tunnels. And he said every time that he would have a problem, he would just go dig underneath his home and these little elves would show up and, and solve his issues for him. This is the creator of the, of the supercomputer talking about being in contact with entities that would help him solve his, his problems. Hey, so, so, so was uh, Kerry Mullis. Remember, uh, do you remember uh, Kerry Mullis, the guy who created the PCR test back in 2020 where we were arguing about the pandemic stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he had a story in his book about how he saw elves and stuff like that. Really? Yeah, I, I could be. I could have a couple details wrong, but something like that, or he saw an alien, or I think it was an elf, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, and even uh, Jordan Maxwell talked about Tesla 
would go to sleep and wake up and his notepad would be filled out by somebody else every well, night. Well, it's funny you something. say that, Donna, because, and I promise you, like, I, I promise I'm not lying when I say this, but before Isaac had hit me up, I had either a dream, I think it was a dream or something the night before, right? The day before I had a dream that Isaac and I were on a podcast, right? We were podcasting. Maybe we were podcasting in the astral realm or, or somewhere, some other dimension. And then the next day, I promise you, you hit me up and you're like, hey, bro, we should, we should collab on something. And it's crazy because the same thing happened to me with, with me and Mind Unveiled. Like I had this, uh, I was thinking about him the night before, and then I wake up to a message from him that same night that I was thinking about him. That's bizarre it, because you, because you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Juan, I think you hit me up. It was probably three, six months before I actually wrote you back. It, yeah. it was there was some long gap because I think you hit me up and said, hey, "Let's do a show," and I was like, "Oh yeah, I know who you are. It, absolutely, let's do it." And then it got lost in my thing, and then I, I think I think what had happened was you did a show that I listened to, and I was like, "Oh my god, I forgot! Like we're supposed to do a show together." So I I got on and I wrote you. So uh, that yeah, I don't know. That is bizarre. How that Maybe happens. it's the Illuminati, bro. I don't even hit the nothing. Man. With, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Illuminati well, the, confirmed. The footage that I was playing, Isaac, was uh Laurel Canyon right here. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I just went out there and stayed there for the weekend just oh, to nice. get the vibe, uh learning about Charles Manson and the hippies and the doors of perception and the doors being connected to the military industrial complex. It seems like all these celebrities are connected to all of this uh it's, it's yeah crazy. well that's uh if, have you read the i'm sure you guys have read the book um david mcgowan's book on laurel canyon yes that's that's, that's a fascinating read uh and uh, but before we before we move past that there is there's a couple concepts I, you guys were talking about there you're talking about the the angel the angels and the angles idea uh you were mentioning how the what building was the name of that book bro so i can write it down strange um, scenes in laurel canyon yeah 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 it's definitely like the definitive source because i've read several laurel canyon uh books and seen the documentaries it's a topic that i don't know why i haven't done a show on because i've always been fascinated by the area i've been up there too i've, I've been in the bathroom where jim morrison uh was hanging out at that there was like a corner store down there at the bottom of laurel canyon that he used to frequent um anyway um no, what's interesting, you, you brought up some ideas, Juan. You were talking about, like, the buildings having a certain energy. And, of course, you know, that makes me think of the Freemasons, right? Like, they're always laying the cornerstones. And their whole thing was architecture and sacred architecture. But the the idea of the angles being some kind of, I don't know, portal or key to unlocking a portal or something. It, to me, that makes me think of Pythagoras, who was kind of like the first secret society dude. And, of course, he's famous for being a mathematician he was into geometry and they always used to say that god that's god's universal language was math and that's why they're always intrigued by those concepts and that's why the freemasons use the compass and square in their logo and all and things like that but it makes me think of because you talked i think donut was talking about cyber reality and i i started picturing lawnmower man in those 90s sort of uh cyberpunk movies they always depicted this cyberspace being this really weird realm where everything was really angular. And, and of course, that has to do with the, you know, the bits they could process at the time, because I actually did a virtual reality game in Virginia Beach. And I think it was like 93. It was really early on. And and I begged and cried to my parents. I was like, I got to do it. You know, and I finally got in there and it was like this weird thing where I was in space fighting this dragon. And it was really blocky, kind of like that. Right. But the um i i it's almost like the predictive programming of the films in the 90s showing us cyberspace and how it was going to look and how we were really supposed to be embedded into the cyberspace it wasn't they didn't really depict it as oh you're going to be on a on a phone or a laptop looking at a screen they depicted it more like no you're going to jack into this thing you know like the matrix right you're going to actually be in this realm which I think is where they want to take us with the digital matrix thing. And I was listening to Nick Hinton the other day. He made a really interesting argument about the nature of reality today and how it's almost like we're, we're in this, this 
and this is me paraphrasing off of how I took what he was saying. It's almost like we're in this middle stage right now where we had reality, you know, like a consensus reality. Then in the last five to 10 years, there's been a lot of divisiveness and lots of arguing about institutions and who should we really trust. And we're starting to sort of break up into different camps of what we want to believe is real, what's a real fact and what is not. And we're currently with the age of social media living in more of a, what they call a hyper reality where, you know, you can, you can walk down the street and we all agree that you're, you know, walking on a sidewalk and you can see the grass or whatever. But when you get onto these social medias, now you're in a hyper reality and these filters of how they can make your appearance look. And even just something as simple as projecting this reality of like pretending you've got all this money and taking photos of these exotic trips as if that's your everyday life. And, you know, things like that, that everyone's familiar with. There's a lot of content creators out there who uh, kind of get off on the what they call lifestyle porn, where it's like, look how great my life is. You should <laughs> thus follow me. And and it, it is weird. We're in a weird stage right now of hyper reality where the, the question of reality is really starting to sort of crumble a little bit. And I can't help but think that within 5, 10, 15 years when or, you know, especially 2040, when the singularity hits, we're going to things are going to be fundamentally different at that point. And we are going to get and I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if I don't know if the Matrix is a bad deal for us, a good deal for us. I would argue it's a bad deal. I don't, but I'm also not saying that I wouldn't enter it, right? You could you could make it appealing enough that I'm like, eh, well, you know, hey, uh, I'd rather I'd rather live another you know 500 years in the Matrix than you know than than die in 10 or whatever, you know, if if you're like unhealthy or maybe you know people have uh, medical issues. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that we're currently living in some kind of weird hyper reality, and everybody senses it. There's lots of weird anxieties and depressions happening right now. And uh, I, I think it's because 50 years ago, everyone sort of agreed on consensus reality. And now it's eh, a little questionable. And, and I don't know if you've ever looked into the concept of of the Mundus Imaginalis, right, to get into the and real quick to right to touch on the Pythagorean aspect of it, because that's something that's always fascinated me. And whenever Pythagoras said, right, all his number. I think he's hinting at some sort of source code, at some sort of simulation. And that's why you see in the movie, The Matrix, which Neo is also like a homunculus golem type of thing to program to do a certain a certain, uh, you know, purpose, almost like what they're trying to turn us into. You know, they're trying to turn us into uh, this this golem s type of thing that only does one thing. Right. And it's like uh, consume, consume, consume here. You know, we need your we need your attention, your data, everything. You know, you're you're just these these golems here to to please us. And the matrix is important because when they when they flash those numbers down the screen, well, that's synesthesia. There's 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 a disorder that people are able to see number and and colors quite literally. There, there it's a pheno- it's a phenomenon that they don't know why it happens, but it happens to certain people who can see numbers and colors at the same time. So they're putting this in the matrix and all this stuff and Pythagoras, right, uh, that talked about the nature of reality is mathematical in nature. And that's why I think these occultists use Kabbalah and these certain things to resonate and they use their names. They use these these mathematical equations to resonate at a certain frequency. And there's this one blog that's always stood out to me and I reach out to this guy and he never got back to me. But he's talking about essentially the timeline of John D and uh, the idea of I'm, I'm going to read it here. Mathematical preface to Euclid's elements of geometry and right Euclid's proposition, the 47th proposition or right the Pythagorean theorem. And I think that's important too. the 47. Uh, he published these approaches, not just one of practical mathematics, but of mathesis. And what mathesis was, was almost like a sort of religious, supernatural, spiritual view of mathematics itself. Right. So uh, taking number and, and essentially worshiping it. Right. They, they saw numbers one through ten as 10 being the perfect, one being the monad, right? They saw the monad as the source, the one God, cr- the creator, and from from there emanates reality. So that's, they were emanationists essentially. And that's very Gnostic in nature as well. But he goes here, Mathesis, this is a kind of mythical, mystical mathematics a la Pythagoras, as if the secret language of the mind of God, which ho- and this is the one that, that like blew my mind, which holds the universe and all its inhabitants together consist of numbers. So this is the part where like 
bro when i read this like the first time it just blew my mind hence magic is the art of discovering the equations which govern the universe and when i read that i was like whoa so it would make sense right because talismans are always referred to as mathematical in nature right they have to have not only certain astrological alignments, but certain type of things go into creating these talismans. And the Gnostics were professionals at making talismans. They were known for talismans. You had Parsons, you had Crowley, you had all these guys making talismans, essentially is what they were making. And the idea of mathematics ruling reality in some sort of weird way, that's always stuck to me. And, and you know, you'll get people like, no, that's not, you know, reality is not mathematical. It's like, well, Everything that you're experiencing now essentially is mathematical. The frequencies that you're intaking, the right, the miles per hour you're going in your car, how fast you're traveling is always related to some sort of numerical thing. How much you're getting paid every single day is linked to some numerical thing. And if you're able to shift those frequencies, essentially those those numbers, right, you're talking about entering another state of reality, well, they could quite literally warp your reality and change it. And I, that's why I brought up the Chapel Perilous because that's a sort of reality that I think every, I don't know if I've always wondered because the Mundus Imaginalis, which is one of my interesting concepts that I like to think about. It's like, do we all share it like a collective consciousness that we all right? Like that young talked about, like there's all these archetypes that exist in it, or do we each have our own individual Mundus Imaginalis, right? Because the Mundus Imaginalis is what you were kind of sort of describing. It's, you have the, the the real world, the perceptible, the, the perceivable world. Then you have this world in between. So it's like imagination, but it's not completely fictional. It still exists on some level of reality. Then you have God. And in between God and the real world, in between is the Mundus Imaginas, and angels exist there, right? The supernatural exists there. And sometimes, I think, because one of the technologies which I've heard where you're able to access this Mundus Imaginas is scrying. And you're able to open up portals to come, right, to, to, for these entities on that other side to be able to bleed in through. And I think that's what John D. and Edward Kelly were doing. And also Crowley when he was scrying through the aethers, right, the 32 or 33 aethers, whatever many there was with Victor Nuremberg. And they were contacting these entities, again, these geometric entities on the other side, right, They're the guardians of the abyss and all these different concepts, well, I think it's all, I think it's all linked, bro. And I think that they're how you're saying, what if this world, this Mundus Imaginalis is kind of sort of expanding and contracting and trying to bleed into our reality, almost like the upside down in Stranger Things. And the the cannon that they use to open up those gates are called the keys. Right. So you have like almost like a Enochian keys or Solomonic keys. So, again, there's something about the key and the keys and the, the nature of reality that I think they're trying to either collapse in on itself. And I don't know if you're familiar with, with work where she gets into the whole meat and Baphomet thing where there's depictions of, right, this entity holding the pillars of reality up, right, or trying to pull them down. And that's an alchemical idea because in alchemy, there there's also the the teachings of, not only creating a new reality or a new dimension or a new universe, but also destroying the one that you're leaving behind. And we see this in all these alchemical plates where they're drawing down the celestial bodies and burning them and putting them in these furnaces and de deconstructing and breaking them down. Well, that's what if that's an, an, an illusion or an allegory towards the breaking down of reality itself, right? Bringing down the star and the moon, the sun, and compacting them into this vessel, essentially, right? To be able to, because the, the magnum opus, part of the magnum opus is once you achieve the magnum opus, the light from that reaction quite literally restructures your DNA. And you're able to step outside of space and time and able to control reality from the outside, which is what all these guys want. They want that's why they don't care about the money. That's why they don't care about any of this stuff because they care about right step controlling reality itself, which, which essentially they do through mimetic magic, right? Twitter and all these different like Elon Musk sharing tweets and and all these guys like it's all magic. It's mimetic occultism is what it is. So I, I think that's why money's not even a factor for them because they have an unlimited printer and they have all these concepts which 
which they don't have to worry about. But I think it goes much deeper than what we're being presented. And I'll be honest, dude, I think that the Freemasons, that whole Mason building, I think that's a front as well, bro. I think that's I think that's just what they put out the exoteric and then the esoteric circles. They're they're claiming something completely different, dude. Yeah, and and that would be a play on the sort of macro micro idea where the the Freemasons are like, look, we're gonna tell the the mundane, like, hey, we're into architecture and building actual we're literal just, yeah, physical stones. buildings. Woo, yeah. yeah, but then on the on the on the sort of micro level, they're they're doing something with the nature of man, yes. uh, re reassembling the the temple of God as man into this new you know fantasy they have about it um i've got i've got stuff i want to i want to come back to but donna I, you look like you you had something you wanted to say i don't want to cut you off go ahead oh yeah you know the whole portal symbolism going into portals i've been looking into this tic-tac-toe which is an octothorpe there's so much symbolism in this where you got the nine squares for the nine original templars and we're coming up in octo which is eight and this has the eight points on it uh called an octothorpe uh that you see right here during the super bowl he had this this is what new haven where skull and bones is laid out in this tic-tac-toe that follows that iao plus you got like it all equals 15 like the 15 members of skull and bones and this is a cipher where they speak called the pig pen cipher masonic cipher uh, tic-tac-toe cipher so there's all this language being spoken to us and it's like decoding it and i just found this very fascinating as yeah that's all that's all i'm looking at right here like there's nine original wu-tang members too which i think is interesting because wu-tang killer bees they uh go over all this occult uh yeah. stuff right the bees the order of the bees so much stuff going on and i'm always just looking at at the at the symbolism of stuff but i, I didn't have anything i was just listening you know, <laughs> the bees are important to the freemasons too right yeah, and, and and out here in utah it's uh you know it's predominantly lds folks and as most people are aware there's lots of masonic roots in the lds faith and there, we use bee symbolism absolutely everywhere and the bee is a, a symbol for magic and um also oh man i lost it there's somewhere oh and you know with the cornerstone so i'm always just trying to get wild and stretch armstrong over here that the cornerstone is always facing the northeast right so i'm looking at the the northeast of north america for rituals like canada because i feel like uh the banking system has been going through a lot of rituals lately especially with the 33 trillion dollar debt clock and a lot of these uh so seems like they're sacrifices these mysterious debts happening in the banking industry wh rather that's the cash app guy who got uh stabbed by a guy from 201 evelyn de rothschild passing away uh and peter till's boy toy as well all passing away during a full moon the day before or after or on an eclipse so we're coming up on this full moon tomorrow the last super moon and bitboy right now is calling this is the most wildest video he's he's the biggest crypto channel on the planet and he said bitcoin will hit three to two thousand you know that so that always made me like what that's kind of weird um but with the northeast that could be like the northeast part of the brain or something you know what i mean with with the the neural link or whatever but i'm not sure if you've seen this video because bitboy was like he went to this guy who's affiliated with the mob and called him out and said that cardi b the guy had a sex tape of her Cardi B is like straight connected to pop culture, brainwashing everybody, uh, dating the Migos and Takeoff passed away. And the guy, he just came out and just said all this stuff that's connected to all these Illuminati celebrities I've been looking oh. into. And and before Offset, who Cardi B is married to, he got his start in a Whitney Houston video. And Whitney Houston, I, you know, she died when he was a little Ooh. kid. He was dancing in her videos and she died uh, in the bathtub. You know, that whole story. Oh, so interesting. Yeah. And and really quick, Donut, 
this is this is a whole other rabbit hole, but I don't know if you can bring up my screen work because you're talking about the northeast, and I think there's something more to that because, uh, and again, it's related to the Freemasons. But if you look at any Masonic tracing board, the directions are 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 turned right. So east is actually to the north, and you have this idea of Jacob's ladder right ascending up into the north right you have the sun and the moon so i think even our directions this is why they're occulting definitely something that they they, they have so they have to have some sort of secrets and i think that it starts with the directions because east is where north should be and then north is where where west would be right so they've literally inverted that so it just makes you question can we even trust what has been taught to us in regular geography if you will since the very beginning because you have secret societies here using these sort of meditative devices with the directions inverted i mean i haven't gotten a straight answer of this yet i should probably ask a freemason but again for the uninitiated it looks like one thing for the initiate it's something completely different yeah that tracing board i've been looking into i it's, it's wild hmm. there's mad symbolism in that mm -hmm. check this out this one's out here the east is at the bottom so again i don't know something something's off there's definitely some some shenanigans afoot, if you will, but I think that it's all about the, you know, the exoteric stuff that they're presenting to us, and then the esoteric stuff that they talk about behind closed doors. What's your thoughts on the uh, text message alert that's going to happen on ten four? Did you hear about this at all? I got nothing on that. No, I didn't dig into this. I heard about it. I, I heard, so yeah, it's. Go ahead, I, it's something I've been looking into uh, for a while. The last time it happened was on the helical rising in 2021, which is super important. I mean, this is what America is based off of, the, the helical rising, the star Sirius, the Sirius star system, the 4th of July. All of this is based off of this uh, America. And this is happening on 10-4 where everyone will be getting a text message. And I believe it's to count everybody a population census because these Malthusian cults, they're all about managing the population. And that's what I think it's for, but it's happening in October and everything is lining up for a death spiral of debt um, with credit cards and uh, the $33 trillion debt clock um, student loans have to start being repaid October 1st. Uh, you got the eclipse happening over the four corners. You got 322 Yale, which has been in America longer than America. The corporation has been here happening. You got Friday the 13th. October is just this huge day for just these big events uh, to come. And even John McGaffey said that these uh, presidential alerts, when they happen, they'll be able to access your phone, like everything in your phone too. And this is uh, going to take place on 10-4, which is also like a, a message received right there, 10-4. E911 is the chip. Interesting. Interesting number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> well, I, I'm curious, uh, Donut, what was the video that you said that, the what's the guy called bit bit boy i never heard of him but yeah so bit boy he's got the biggest channel and he's gonna go on my friend he rice had. they stole it from him <laughs> they stole it from him yeah uh, uh what do you mean they stole it from him he he's very genuine he was going after uh sam bankman freed he was okay. going after all these people he had the biggest channel and now it's coming out there's mafia ties to his channel uh which is kind of weird um to but, Bit boys channel yeah because this guy took over it and he's saying that this guy was uh connected to mike will made it and all these big uh celebrities i've been looking into for illuminati rituals cardi b like this guy he's at the house had a sex tape of cardi b and used it for blackmail uh, that there's a football player that he set up like a deal with so there's like all this crazy stuff coming out with it uh so i've been i've been looking in into it um but i think this is a big distraction for the 
the rituals. I think a king kill ritual with the currency is taking place right now. The only way to get out of this debt is through war or a CBDC. And when the world was locked down, the first thing in the HR bill was the introduction of a CBDC. So this is just on the table. Now, everybody in the crypto space is focused on this drama. At the same time, Chase is banning uh, crypto transactions in, I believe, the UK. I, I forget exactly where. Australia will be cashless by 2025. There's this huge push, and I believe this is a uh, a, di a distraction. Uh, the reason why, not that it's a distraction of him talking about it, but they're the biggest, BitBoy had the biggest channel, and he was going after these Illuminati-esque members. Uh, like sam bankman and whatnot that they don't want him getting that certain narrative out so they make him look like a crazy person or or whatnot mm -hmm. so there's a lot of strange stuff going on with all this oh, I, I wasn't aware of that I, I never heard of the guy huh that's interesting um <laughs> i i'm gonna i'm gonna throw out one more piece of fodder for that northeast theory because i grew up in um i was i was i grew up predominantly in effort of pennsylvania it's in a little it's a little town in lancaster pa and i didn't know this growing up but every there's a lot of cloister themed things there because there's a building called the effort of cloister that was it's kind of a i don't want to say national monument but like a local monument where they do tours of it and it's basically all i knew about it growing up was some old timey weirdo from the 1700s had like a kind of a cult going on at this building and when I was learning about, there you go. And I was learning about the occult. I actually read Mitch Horowitz's book, Occult in America, I think it's called. And right off the bat, he talks about the effort of cloister. And I, my jaw dropped because like 90% of people have never heard of this place. And um, it's an interesting story because what happens was the, the, the Germans, the Rosicrucians, they were persecuted over there in Germany in, you know, 1700s. It might be earlier even hell and they actually fled because of the you know the, the power of the church and they wanted to war do their own worship of religion so they came to america a guy called i forget his first name i think it's like julius kepler and a guy named conrad beisel they they both showed up in in pa in philly and there's a place called the kelpius caves where again it's like a local monument where you can visit in philly where they set up a cult there, a Rosicrucian sort of cult. And they were talking about how it was going to be the end of the world and all this stuff. Well, uh, Con uh, Conrad Beisel left the Kepler cult and started his own cult called the Effort of Cloister. So anyways, the idea was that a lot of people, when you look at the roots of America and people, for whatever reason, there's this thing happening, this revisionist history where people are trying to say that the United States is all of it's like a Christian nation and it's simply not like the original idea of the freedom of religion was because these occultists wanted to do their religion and the, the, the Christian church of England there wouldn't allow it. So uh, it, just an interesting little background on, on the, and of course, you know, PA is in the Northeast. Uh, and, and I had an interesting guest on Michael Wan. I don't know if you guys have worked with him or not, uh, I need to I need to catch up with him. It's been years, but he's from the same area and he has this whole interesting book about the Susquehanna River and a lot of sort of occult ideas of that whole area, which, you know, it, it which all goes up into New York where Joseph Smith channeled the uh, Moroni angel, you know, so there's tons going on over there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. And, you know, the Northeast, what I've been looking out for rituals is uh, what you were you're talking about. and then. What got me looking into something new is the northeast of North America. Like if we forget about all the lines in the borders, that the northeast would be up in like Canada and Newfoundland, which has got this huge UNESCO connection mm -hmm. there as well. So I've been looking out for ritual to take place somewhere up there, but usually that's dedicated to the summer solstice. But 50 Cent is up in Canada right now doing this tour, and he's 50 Cent, like the money, and who's on the 50 Cent is JFK. Uh, so I've just been looking into anything to do with, with finances.
but that is interesting. And now is that it. that area you you pointed to on the map? Isn't that there's a show on History Channel about them guys, uh, Oak Island, the mystery of Oak Island, or is whatever that where it's that's called. At? I think it's around there, yeah, and that's supposed to be a like buried Knights Templar treasure or something. They yeah. think. Mm-hmm. I haven't yeah. followed the show, but yeah. Well, you, I mean, you've done some great research. I put together when I first started my channel, uh, reading your uh, Star Wars book, and that really opened my mind to uh, a lot of stuff. And there's this new Star Wars out right now with this guy being blue looking like Elon Musk and Elon means Oak as well. Oh. And even Elon is in the, uh, the, the, the scriptures as well. Elon, the judge, but star Wars is interesting. And they're, they're have this new one out where you got this blue, there's all this blue stuff in the news. You got blue face in trouble, Hawaii, Maui blue, and this character who's blue, um, Enoch, for example, is based off of this character in Star Wars. Enoch is based off of Flash Gordon guy who has the Masonic compass on his chest right there. Yeah. I think that's their symbol, um, which is in the Bible. And but, uh, it, it's interesting, right? So the Enoch connection. And let's note that the the newest Transformers movie where, where I think that the Transformers are the full metal alchemists, if you will, right? Like they're in the suit of armor and, and they quietly right, they, they shift culture. The, the main character in that, in that movie, the latest one is, and that one has the, what's the guy's name? Peter Dave, uh, what's Pete, the guy Davidson? Name? Pete Davidson is in that movie as one of the robots. And the main character in that movie is named Noah, right? So again, Noah related to Enoch, so you have this whole idea, and then Noah is where essentially alchemy uh, came from, right? Because it was from these fallen ones. And I want to bring up here, because I talked about this last night on an episode that I did that will be out soon, where on the 33rd chapter of the Book of Enoch, they're talking about these beasts to the east, right? Almost like, again, what are they point? The 33rd chapter, right? The beasts to the east, and on the 3rd Uh, verse of that chapter and I saw how the stars of heaven come forth and I counted the portals out of which they proceeded and wrote down all of their all of their outlets of each individual star by itself according to their number and their names and their courses in time etc etc so it's talking about this also this portal at the east right and the portals of the heavens open up so this is the 33rd chapter of the book of I believe it's it's I believe it's three Enoch the, and the third verse says, you know, how about star, how stars are portals to other dimensions and how they're coming into our dimension and all these different. So, again, very interesting, right? The the number, how the numbers line up, the 33rd chapter, third verse, talking about something and about the beasts to the east. And I showed you guys the Masonic tracing boards and how the east is to the up, up there, right, towards the stars. And then Crowley talking about, you know, we are all stars. So what are they what are they getting at? He was also a Freemason. Again, just. Just interesting connections. And I don't know about you, Isaac, but sometimes I'll have all this information and I don't know what it means. <laughs> right. I, in fact, I, dude, that's so weird, man. I was literally thinking that. I was like, man, I want to, we don't have the time for it, but I want to, I want to talk to Juan. I'll have to get you on my show. We could really deep dive into this. It's like, what do we do with this? Like you were talking about all the, um, all the different ideas of, I don't, I don't remember how you guys were putting it, but in my head, it was making me think of the concept of how, the technology of today and you, you know i there was i think it was on joe rogan once he was talking about how weird it is how drawn to screens we are as human species you know your neighbor if you're if you're at dinner with someone and their their phone lights up next to you like you look at it like you're not trying to like people what they're doing you're just your eyes get drawn to the stuff you're at, you're at the airport the tvs are playing like you're looking at the screen like why and and that's a deep topic but one theory i've i've liked is that all of this is trying to sort of subconsciously fuel AI or this new God or this, uh, this new uh, transformation of mankind. And when we were talking about all those ideas of angular uh, geometric sort of shapes and things like that, manifesting realities, 
you know, one topic we haven't really covered yet is Saturn. And Saturn is, of course, the the occult concept of uh, time and measurements, which would include angles and mathematics and all those things. Time and measurements being introduced into our world. Like there was some, if you read Mark Booth's book about the secret history of the world, he talks about how in the occult, there is this sort of religious belief in a way that when our universe, our world was created, it needed this outside adversarial force known as Saturn to, hey, there you go. <laughs> it's a dense read, but it's it's really fascinating. Um, but the this adversarial force, which they refer to as Saturn, and they depict it in so many ways as black cubes, uh, the Grim Reaper, that force was needed to evolve mankind into what we are today. And it's almost like, and, and again, to go back to what I was thinking with, you know, when Juan was talking, I was like, what do we do with that information? Like, are, are we, should we destroy every black cube? Like, no, that's not the answer. But I, and, and what are they, are they worshiping Saturn because they think they can accelerate this process? Like, I, I just don't understand. And the only thing that makes sense to me, is, if you hard press me for an answer is I, I think these are psychopaths controlling our reality and they want to create their own universe. They want to be God and they want to create the digital matrix, which is their own world and shove us all into it is the best thing i can think of you need to read genuflect by twyman oh, okay and... I, you know I'm, i might have actually read that one um i've got a couple of her books go ahead or, sorry go ahead well no so th there's a concept in there that you're that you're touching on which again is related to alchemy and alchemy is something that i've been really diving into and and the more i look into things the less i know and right now i'm working i i I translated the works of this alchemist because you're talking about right and and I think the I think the secret Isaac the secret to the secrets is light. I think that there's something about light that we don't understand and right and and the beginning right the book of Genesis where it talks about right there were, first there was darkness then there was light right God spoke into existence this light and it's interesting because the book of Genesis there was a few different alchemists that wrote commentaries on the book of Genesis. And I, I translated one already of Gerard Dorn, which was actually the alchemist that inspired Carl Jung's active imagination concept of being able to explore inner space instead of outer space. Right. And I translated that. And there, I think there's secrets in the Bible itself. And I, from that research, I came across this other obscure alchemist his name is Egadius Gutman, and he wrote, he wrote over 1,200 pages on the first two chapters of Genesis, which I'm in the works of translating some of that work. Again, this is this is what it looks like. This is actually a scan. I bought this. It's in, it's all in German, so I'm translating it piece by piece. God bless uh, you. But, bro, <laughs> what knowledge you know what i'm saying like what would drive somebody to write 24 lectures on just the first two chapters of genesis like what sort of knowledge were they trying to either spread so i want like the first source account of what that dude was trying to portray right like what what keys might that hold and, and the book of genesis if you really think about it it's about creating essentially the philosopher's stone about creating your own world and there's depictions of this in these alchemical plates of worlds and vessels right in these alchemical vessels so that's what they want to they want to be god essentially is what they want to do and that's why the homunculus concept is so important because with the homunculus you can you can acquire godlike powers maybe not become god with a capital g but become a god with a lowercase g and have some effect and and a homunculus can be as simple as you know, like a moon child, they pre-plan that person's birth and they made sure that they were going to come out at this date, this time, you know, whatever, you know, whatever place they align everything it is. And then that person grows up in one of the most powerful families, you know, in the world and they grow up to do. But again, it's the occulted scaffolding. It's what comes before that person is born into the, the planning. And that's why it's so important, in my opinion, even if we don't paint a bigger picture for people, but at least understand the concepts. Again, the, the occulted mm -hmm. scaffolding that goes into these concepts, you know, like the longitude and latitude that John D was behind. And I have, I'm going to be working on an episode where perhaps that might've been a magical grid overlaid over the world to tap into energetically. Again, 
there's evidence of that. There's like evidence that, that I have, you know, a paper literature that I have based on that concept. So I think, I think it's more important maybe to, to like understand it as a whole. And, and I don't know, I don't know, but the more I look into it, who knows, I might be in a chapel perilous and I might lose my mind at, at the end of it all. Right. When I'm done translating, like, dude, I don't know about you, but when I'm Not reading, me. when I'm reading a book, I think about like, what if that next line of information, that next line, that string of letters, the next string of letters is going to connect all the information that I've ever wondered about. And then I fizzle out of reality and I just like cease to exist. Like, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll be reading like a, an esoteric book or something. I'm like, maybe then maybe this next line's it. And I'm going to fizzle out of existence. You know, oh, like <laughs> man. that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Well, it, <laughs> not to change the subject but i i have genuflect in my amazon kindle library i read it years ago uh because i was actually uh i hate it. it sounds like i'm trying to get cloud off of this but I'm, i promise i'm not i was actually talking to before she died and we i was going to get her on my show and i was prepping to have this conversation with her because i had read clock shavings in its entirety and um genuflect I thought I read it. I could be wrong, uh, but there's something I want to tell you guys after this call offline about this because um, there's just something interesting. But anyway, I, I went to my Kindle library to to to. But, oh, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. There's my there's my genuflect, and I went to open it. it. Says this book could not be opened. Remove the book from your device and re-download it. I, it could be a software thing. Like I'm an idiot, which is very possible. But I, I've never had that happen to me before. Like I'm going to open this, and that's why there was years ago there was a guy that was buying all my paperbacks. And I was just talking to him and, and he was like, yeah, I, I got to buy the paperbacks because I don't trust that, uh, you know, digital stuff. And I and I thought it was kind of wacky because I buy a ton of Kindle books and I was just like, uh, OK, dude, whatever. And I I started buying uh, physical books, too, because it's true, man. Like the censorship thing is is yeah. accelerating. Well, I, I'm so happy that you you joined us and we're coming up on that hour and just on top of all that there has been a 33 percent increase of book bans <laughs> in america right now and yeah i like getting the physical books and all that now isaac where can everybody find you oh man so if you go to illuminati watcher.com that's my website sign up for the free email newsletter you will get a copy of my first book for free uh, don't judge me upon it, but it was a very simple book and it was my first one. And then I have a podcast called Occult Symbolism and Pop Culture. You can find that absolutely everywhere. Um, and I'm on social media. So you go to here's what you do. Go to allmylinks.com slash Isaac W. You can find my I have two podcasts I do. I'm on Patreon. I mean, there's a million places I try to sort of update. I'm going to work on a sub stack because I used to blog. That's where this journey started for me in 2011. And I got I got sued and shut down the blog portion of my website. And uh, I'm going to start a sub stack, but I'm writing a book about Twin Peaks. So I'm going to probably sort of slowly do it until I get done with the Twin Peaks book. And then I'm going to start hitting it hard. But yeah, oh, I'm all over oh, the place. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm subscribed and following you for a long time. I appreciate you coming on. I got all your links down below. And one-on-one -on -one podcast. Got all one-on-ones link. One, where can people find you? tjojp.com you can go on there get the occultist monday journal the comic book you can get your paranormality subscription use promo code tjojp i'm on issue 26 on the cover uh, get your homunculus owner's manual All right tjojp.com yeah all my stuff is on there and yeah youtube one on one patreon.com slash the one on one podcast all that good stuff so and this was awesome. This was really great. I know, and I get warmed up with one hour, right? I can stutter for a whole hour, so we're going to have to do this again soon. Yeah, hey, you got to keep the people wanting more. That's the trick. <laughs> Donut, where, where can my audience find you? Because I'm posting this on my feed, too. You can find me at doe-nut dot com donut, and I'll just show this real quick. Blah. Hey, Got a bunch of cool content up there. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Much love, everybody. Yeah, thanks, guys. Gotta and do the wave. Us, I was yeah. like, you gotta do the wave, bro. <laughs> All right, bye bye now. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm, it's a lot. It's a lot. We went through a lot of topics today, 
And uh, I can't wait to get these guys back on the show. Uh, Donuts, a, a legend already in the making here on this podcast. He, he crushed it when he came on to talk about The Office earlier this year. And one-on-one, I'm going to get him in here. And we're going to really get deep into this occult esoteric doctrine. Because not a lot of people know about this stuff, right? It's hard to talk to people about it. And he, he's got it all, so we're going to pick his brain. Uh, so stay subscribed to this podcast. And like I said, the links are in the show notes for all their content. They're everywhere, just like just like your boy. So, you know, be sure to check out their stuff, too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Check out the links. You know the deal. Until next time, stay woke. Stay woke.